What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the end of October, heading into the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, I actually bought a stock today on a dip that I believe is a good spot for a swing trade. I'm going to be updating you guys on that and I'm also going to be updating you guys and going over very briefly Facebook's earnings as well as Apple's earnings which arguably are the two most anticipated companies to report here in the earnings season and honestly in every single earnings season. So all I ask from you is if you enjoy this video feel free to go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you want to see further content from me and if you want to be further connected with our community the strive smart community two links down below being the discord group chat and the facebook group 100 free of charge that is how you can be connected so let's get right into it starting off with the s p 500 here guys just like we always do it ended up closing the day up nine dollars and 88 cents up 0.33 percent nothing crazy guys but on the smaller time frames here we can see that this was actually a really good technical day here because we pushed to the higher high here, which is good. Another all-time high at 3050.1. And we also solidified that level at 3030, which is pretty much the old all-time high at around 3027, as a new support, right? We solidified that today with about four separate uh, bottoms here. We kind of bottomed out there four separate times, right? Once in the beginning of the day. And if I pull up to the one uh, one day one minute chart if i if i pull that up you'll be able to see it here we bought them there in the morning arguably twice here right then again later on in the day and then towards power hour and towards the latter half of the day we got the double bottom and then we exploded to that higher high and again to that all-time high at 3050 so in my opinion this is looking really really bullish in terms of the spx so at this point guys and i'm sure all of you already saw this not maybe not all of you but most of you saw Facebook and Apple after hours how they're doing and again we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes here but since they're up a decent amount now this can carry on into Thursday and Friday and thus dragging up the stock market and really this is in, in you know uh, um, contingent on whether or not Facebook and Apple stay green but I think it can push up the market to all-time highs again tomorrow and maybe even on Friday as well but let's say Facebook and Apple all of a sudden they tank i'm thinking the market will go down with them but since their earnings were pretty good and again we'll cover that here in a little bit i don't really see them tanking thus the markets in my opinion are going to continue to go up here over the next couple of days so overall this is looking really bullish on the spx if we go to the dow jones here guys this is looking very bullish as well despite us not hitting all an all-time high quite yet we're actually on our way now in, into the middle of this channel and, and on our way to that all-time high, which is around 27400 bucks. And let me pull up the five-day, five-minute chart so you guys can see how solid and strong 27000 is as a support here, stemming over the past couple of days, three days to be exact, right? We bottomed here on the 28th. We double-bottomed here on the 29th. And today, it feels like we had four or five bucks bottoms here at that 27k level before launching up and hitting that higher high at 27.2. So right now, this is looking extremely bullish in my opinion, right? So just watch for that potential break above 27.4. Anything above that is obviously an all-time high, right? So uh, taking a look here at the NASDAQ, guys, this one did quite well today as well. You can see the futures are up right now, 10 bucks, up 0.13%. But if I pull up my Yahoo Finance app to get the exact um, you know, number that we closed at, we ended up closing up 0.33%, up 27 points on the NQ. And the futures are up after hours here because, again, Facebook and Apple are up as well. And uh, those are tech-heavy stocks. Obviously, the NASDAQ is a tech-heavy index, so that is influencing the, uh, the NASDAQ to go up here. And the technicals that I'm liking on the NASDAQ here are... 
you know, we pulled down, held 80.50 as a support, and uh, which was the all-time high that we've been talking about on these videos. We held that old resistance as a support, and we really popped at that point and uh, really hit another all-time high here at 81.40. And that's really good because that's a higher high. The bounce on the old resistance as a new support is a higher low. So that is, in my opinion, a nice, beautiful um, continuation here of the uptrend. And you can see it based on that trend line that I just drew, right? And going to that one hour chart, you can see it even better how nice of an uptrend this is. We pulled down beautifully, held the higher low, and again, we popped to that all-time high. So we got a rate cut. Again, that's something to mention, uh, worth mentioning in this video. In my opinion, the market has been expecting that. So that's why we're not seeing, you know, a crazy movement here. I guess arguably you could say um, the spike here towards the end of the day could have been from the rate cut um, but yeah we got a rate cut 25 basis points now it's between 1.5 and 1.75 so it's interesting to see how this market is going to react uh, 1.5 1.75 in terms of um, basis points here and it's interesting to see how the market's going to react to this over the next couple of days so overall that's my thoughts on the market very brief here guys S&P at all time highs NASDAQ at all time highs and I honestly think the Dow will follow suit here and get to all-time highs over the next couple of days, you know, as these markets find their way to continue to go up, um, you know, in my personal opinion. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? And let's get into very quickly now what I personally bought today, what I traded today, then we'll get into Apple and Facebook's earnings and a couple of other stocks that I'm watching here that I'm looking to trade. So what did I buy today, guys? I'm pretty sure I posted it on my Instagram. So follow me on Instagram down below if you haven't done so already at StotSurfest. But what I bought today was McDonald's, guys. MCD. And I actually got a pretty good entry here. And the fact that I'm up about 1.5% on my position already gave me comfort to hold these shares overnight. And honestly, my goal with this position was to hold them overnight anyway because I'm looking to swing trade. Right. So overall, McDonald's had not a terrible earnings report, but they didn't have the best earnings report either, which is why the stock ended up tanking down from 210 all the way down to 190, finding that support at around 190, and then ultimately breaking above 193 and into the 194s where I thought, and through my analysis, I figured this was a good buying point because you can see 194, 193-ish is a level of support. You know, the last time we broke above there, we filled the gap up to 198 very nicely. So for me, the pop above there, that was a buy signal this morning, right? And if we go to that one day, one minute, we can see this one was straight up trending all day. And I got in at about 194.20, um, I believe, 194.30, somewhere around there, if I'm not mistaken. And again, you guys can see I'm already up about 1.4% on my shares right now. And I do plan on scaling into this position over the next couple of weeks as as it does continue and if it does continue the uptrend. Overall, you know, my thoughts on McDonald's here once I start to get in the profit more, I'm probably going to set um, a trailing stop loss. But ultimately, as you guys can see on these trend lines that I've, dr I've drawn out here, the first point that I want it to break above is 198. This is the next resistance I'm seeing. If we break above there, I'm planning on adding more to my position. So right now I'm in with about 10, 15% of the goal of my position, right? Because when I'm swing trading, I'm scaling in slowly. That's kind of my strategy. And I know a bunch of others do that as well and do well doing that, right? So I'm in there with about 10, 15% at 194. And once we break 195, if we break 195, or not 195, 198, that's where I'm looking to add even more. And ultimately, the first sell target on my uh, McDonald's, you know, in the perfect scenario here in, in terms of my McDonald's shares will be at around 206 bucks. So let's say I'm in 194, like I said, I get in 190. 
98. Maybe I buy a little bit more in 200, bringing my total position weighted probably at around 197, 198, something like that, right? Let's say I'm in there with the weighted position. How much could I make up to that first target sell? It's going to be around 5%. So to give you guys perspective on how much money that is, even though I don't focus on the money value, I focus on the percentage. Let me give you guys some perspective, right? So 10,000 bucks, 5%, that's 500 bucks. 1,000 bucks, 5%, that's 50 bucks. So if you're playing with whatever amount of money, my my personal philosophy, and I know a lot of people do this as well, is to focus on the percentage, not the dollar amount. Because if you're focusing on the dollar amount, a lot of the time, if you're trading with a smaller amount of money, you're going to be discouraged. But why I focus on percentage and why I always have is you can really scale up that way. If you're starting out with a thousand, you know, you, you get 5%, that's 50 bucks. Then if you keep scaling, eventually, let's say you get to 10,000, 20,000, the profits are going to be massive as you're scaling up, as you're building your principles, as you're building your strategies, and as you advance as a trader and as an investor. So now that's pretty much my strategy, you know, with McDonald's, I'm in that. And honestly, that's all I ended up doing today in terms of my trading, right? I actually got into you guys, um, did not do anything really with the position, kind of a break even play today, guys, because if you were paying attention to it, you know, I was getting in at this level because we were holding 1660, 1670, but we never got that pop. So that's kind of why I broke even because I bought in and honestly, I just sold out because, you know, I didn't want to take the huge risk of holding this one overnight in my larger accounts, right? You guys saw yesterday in the YouGas video, I've been holding overnight, but that's in my smaller, more risky account. And, you know, at this point, I'm kind of waiting to see what the report is going to be like tomorrow at 1030. AM Eastern Standard before taking a position in either U gas or D gas. So, you know, I figured you know, maybe breaking even would be the safest bet at this point. And that's why I ended up hopping out of you guys, um, you know, before the market closed. But overall, that's what I ended up doing. The dip buy is McDonald's, guys. I'm really liking McDonald's right now. I think it's a good, it's going to be a huge turnaround play here over the next couple of months. Now let's get into Apple and Facebook earnings because, guys, these did quite well. And let's just get into it and uh, some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now. So Apple has been ripping over the past couple of months, you know, on this 6 month chart you guys can see back in February it was 168, now it's almost $250 per share, giving that, you know, a share increase of like 40-50%, uh more like 30-40%, which is absolutely incredible, right? And here after hours on the 1 day 1 minute you can see it's kind of been going everywhere. They initially reported earnings went up to two 250 back down to 245 and now it's hovering around 247 as expected right you know when these big companies report earnings a lot of the time they're moving up and down up and down like crazy after hours and that's just how it goes guys so let's take a look at what they ended up reporting you guys can see here based on the CNBC article Apple beat Wall Street's expectations on revenue and earnings even as iPhone sales came in lighter than expected total revenue is up partially due to the 18% growth in Apple services business and 54% growth in wearables including the AirPods and speaking of of AirPods, guys, have you seen the new ones that are coming out? They're a bit pricey. I'm probably not going to get them, to be honest. I'm too kind of frugal for that, to be completely honest with you guys. They're like 250 bucks, but they look pretty slick. They have that, you know, kind of cushiony earbud um, built into it, which I personally really like. So if they ever do um, some kind of sale, which I don't even know if Apple does sales like that, to be honest, for their big products, I doubt they even do. Um, I'd probably buy them. But, you know, just a little side note on those AirPods. They are pretty cool. You guys can see Apple stock was up slightly in after hours trading. Let's get into the meat and bones of these earnings, guys. Revenue, $64 billion versus $62.99 billion estimated. That's a nice beat on revenue. EPS came in way better than estimates. 3.03 in EPS versus 2.84 estimated. Guidance revenue 
which is important here, came in at 85.5 billion versus, or not versus, 289.5 billion versus 86.92 billion. So obviously, if their revenue gets to the upper end of that guidance, that's going to be the best case scenario. And even above that would be even better, right? Going above the guidance, that's always great. That shows that management is executing and doing a very good job at just executing the goals of the business. Right, iPhone revenue 33.36 billion versus 32.4 billion. So, iPhone revenue came in um, above the estimates, and services revenue 12.51 billion versus 12.15 billion estimated. So, we all know services this is the growing business, one of the best growing businesses for Apple and what they're really focusing on now. So, the fact that they beat there that is a really good sign. So, those are the brief numbers numbers here on Apple without getting too deep into it because this video will end up being 45 minutes long. That's kind of what we're dealing with right here. And after hours, it seems like, you know, Apple and honestly into the, the close of the market today, Apple held that 50 SMA on the four hour chart. Seems like we obviously hit an all time high and it seems like this uptrend is continuing. So I'd personally be interested in seeing, is this going to continue over the next couple of weeks? Are we eventually going to take a break? breather in Apple. I think we eventually will, guys, here. You know, I'm talking about a sizable breather, not like a 1-2% type of thing. I'm talking like a 5% at least. I think Apple's in need of a trim of at least 3-4-5% at this point because this stock's just overheated. It's insane right now, guys. So, you know, if my theory comes correct, over the next month or two, you know, hey, we might hit an all-time high again, but ultimately, I think we could pull down either to that 50 SMA and retest, even though that's not a 5% trim. I think the 180 SMA is where, you know, we would see a healthy pullback too, and that could be a spot where I'd consider buying on the dip as a swing trade. And guys, if we do get there, you know, that's putting us close to that 5-6% trim. So that's kind of what I would like to see for Apple before getting in. Now getting to Facebook and Facebook's looking way more attractive right now in my opinion because we've been talking about this channel that Facebook needs to get into before I want to trade it. And that channel is between 193 and 205 bucks and honestly even higher than that which is the all-time high we hit before after last earnings at 215 bucks. So a lot of margin here guys, a lot of potential from where we are now at 196 after hours up at 205, that's 5%. Up to that 215 level, that's 8, 9, even up to 10%. So what did they do in terms of earnings here, guys? This is clearly doing very, very well after hours. We actually hit 200 bucks here. Let's take a look at their earnings. Let me pull them up for you. So earnings came in at $2.12 versus $1.91 per share. That is crazy. So they absolutely beat earnings um, in terms of EPS. Revenue came in at 17.65 billion versus 17.37 billion. So they beat on revenue. Daily active users, although this number has been slowing down, obviously, guys, still came in pretty nice at 1.62 billion versus 1.61 billion. Monthly active users came in right in line with estimates at 2.45 billion versus 2.45 billion. And average revenue per user, 7.26, $7.00. 26 cents versus seven dollars and nine cents which is a very very nice beat on that and taking a look at some of these charts here um, in terms of Facebook you know their average revenue per user has kind of been halting here over the past couple of quarters you can see we're kind of in line with where we were about a year ago in Q4 of 18 so ultimately I'd like to see that number get closer and closer to eight bucks here and I think it will as the company continues to expand and get more users. But then again, guys, the company is kind of slowing down in terms of its users here. As you can see, we're still growing, but not as quick as we were a couple of years ago, which makes sense, right? Because there's a limited amount of people in the world. Obviously, Facebook is blocked in China, and if Facebook was in China, guys, oh my goodness, their revenue can literally double and triple from where it is right now due to how massive that market is. 
is, but that's a whole different story. I don't think they'll ever be in China. It's, it's just not going to happen in my opinion. But nonetheless, those are what Facebook's earnings are looking like. Pretty nice growth all across the board. One thing to mention um, that's worth mentioning is they grew their revenue 29% from a year earlier, marking the third straight quarter of sub-30 expansion. So again, their revenue, you know, their numbers aren't growing as crazy as they were a couple of years ago, but still nice growth here in Facebook. I'm liking the way it's looking. So overall, you know, again, this is a trade that I want to make and I'm most likely going to buy. Um, I don't know about tomorrow. I want to see when it settles out, where it settles down a little bit, but probably next week I'm looking to build a swing position here on Facebook. I think it's looking very attractive. So let's get into some other stocks very quickly, guys, um, that I'm looking at. We talked about McDonald's, Facebook, Apple. Let's get into some natural gas and natural gas today, guys. You know, we saw you gas earlier in this video. It pretty much consolidated here all day at 268. And I'm really thinking that this, uh, not not the earnings report, the gas report at 1030 AM is what's going to shift this either up or down. And based on the price, this has been very bullish. And arguably, this is the next setup before the next bull run here on natural gas. And we could very well get that, you know, based on what these, um, you know, the, uh, the, the report's going to be again, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. So watch the potential gap fill here to 271, 272. If we break that, that's going to be extremely, extremely bullish. And from there, you guys is probably going to be dipping its toes back into the mid 17s like we hit earlier, that we hit earlier today, and maybe even higher to 18 bucks because 18 bucks, as you can see here, um, is one of the next major resistances. And the good thing is we held 16.7 so nicely today guys as a support I wouldn't be surprised if we do fill this gap to 1820 over the next couple of days maybe even tomorrow you know as quick as because this thing has been moving so quick I wouldn't be surprised if we did hit it tomorrow because literally we gapped up 15% the past couple of days both I think both um, you know yesterday and today were huge gap up days so watch for that you know you guys is looking very bullish in my personal opinion right now shot Shopify is another one worth watching here, but I would only get into it if we were to break above these moving averages because now we're seeing a bearish cross here, which is the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. That's a negative sign. We're getting rejected by the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA. That's a negative sign as well, but a good sign here is that we're holding... 297 300 bucks as a support. That's a good sign. Earnings are, are already out of the way. They didn't do too well in terms of earnings, but nonetheless, if we get that technical break, I think that could be enough here, maybe with some volume in it, to push Shopify even higher here and maybe break us out, you know, to that 350 level again, 360, and even to an all time high. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised just, you know, due to the way that. This has been moving over the past couple of months. This stock has been going parabolic. Roku and Shopify, in my opinion, are the hottest stocks in the stock market so far. I don't know if that's a fact due to percentages, um, based on percentages, but you know, out of the ones I've been tracking, you know, these are the two that have been flying up the craziest based on my watch list, right? So, you know, that's what I'm looking for uh, in terms of Shopify. That break, in my opinion, would be a buy signal. Um, Abvi is another one that's looking very bullish but I'm hesitant because they're reporting earnings on the first. So I'm most likely going to wait until after that. But the good thing is we're in the next channel now between 79 bucks and $81.50, giving us a margin of profit of around 2 to 3%. So that is something that could definitely happen here on AbV. But again, I'm waiting for these earnings because I don't want to get stuck in a trade um, where you know the earnings are poor and then the stock dumps. I'd rather just wait until after for Abby here. And that's what I'm going to do. The last stock that I want to talk about today, guys, is PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. This one's setting up, in my opinion, for a potential breakout here tomorrow um, based on what it ended up doing today. And what did it end up doing today, guys? Well, we ended up maintaining the old resistance, being that 180 SMA as a support. And we got a huge bullish candle here on this four-hour chart. And if we go to the one-day, one-minute, you guys can see how bullish this thing 
thing looked heading into the close of the market today. And actually, after hours, you can see it's up right now as well. So I'd say, you know, a buy signal on PayPal, in my opinion, would be if we start to break back up into the 107s, that could be a place to scale in. And ultimately, above 108.50, that's where I'm looking to buy into PayPal. So overall, guys, that is the market update for today, trading update, what I'm personally doing and my thoughts and kind of an update, brief update on what Apple and Facebook did in terms of their earnings. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know down below in the comments what you thought about it. Feel free to go down below, hit that like button and consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you do want to see further content from me. And also, don't forget, join the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the Strive Smart Facebook group. Those are linked down below in the description box. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.